My stepdad was my top subscriber on my naughty website. Now I know what you're all thinking. Oh, stepdad fantasy, could have made content from it, blah, blah, blah. This man had been in my life since I was 11 years old and spent $2,000 on custom content every single video that I sent out. When I caught him, he denied it to all of his friends and obviously my mum got rid of him straight away. But yeah, if you want to talk about family trauma, my stepdad watched me have SEX with my partner for two months. Well, well, well. Here is the custom content that my stepdad was requesting on my naughty site. Like I said in a previous video, we messaged every single day on the website and he would make requests almost every single day. Every day? This gives a whole new meaning to every day I'm suffering. One of them was to see the underwear that I was wearing every day. At the time I was working still, so I was out of the house five days a week and he would ask for pictures in the bathroom or the change rooms of wherever I was. He also requested that when I was filming solo content at home that I would not do it in the bathroom or in the shower. He always wanted it to be on my bed or on the floor of my bedroom. Which mind you, he had access to this room every single day. That is Imagine thinking that it was a bad thing, by the way, for a man to say that it's their job to take care of women. Remember when that was noble? Do you remember? I don't remember when, when the Titanic was sinking. I don't remember all the women complaining that they were on the boats first with the children. No, no. Were they like, no, no, I'm staying here. Men, you take the boats. I've got this. No, because that would be weird. That would be, make no sense, right? And now we're warped, right? So this now, now we've been programmed as women to think that when a man says, it's my job to take care of a woman, you're supposed to be offended by that. Instead of say, saying to yourself, well, that's a, a fundamentally decent man that thinks that's his job and is going to work his butt off to make that happen. Warped society. Don't play the game. So what about the women that didn't choose to raise a kid on their own? But the 50 plus percent divorce rate, women are filing 70, 80 percent of all divorces. Women are choosing to wreck their own homes every day. Men are not choosing to wreck their own homes and make women single parents. That's a choice that women are making. Uh, why? Because their husbands are trash, treating them badly? <laughs> yeah, the, okay, now, you, now here we go with the ad hominem stuff. This is the same stuff that's been piped into the culture forever. That when a woman chooses to break her home, it's always the man's fault. Men always just want virgins that have hadn't had too many ones and are really good girls. Like, you want younger women as well, so it's like that whole predator vibe. So what if I said women, women are stupid, can't make money, short and weak because they want a guy that makes more money than them, tall than them, more confident, ambitious, etc. That would be ludicrous, wouldn't it? We don't shame female preferences. Okay? When a woman says, I want a man that's tall, makes money, etc., you go, girl, you deserve it. That's your preferences. If I say, I want a girl that's not a that has some sexual temperance, isn't going to embarrass me when I walk in a room, beautiful, young, etc. That's considered, oh, that's that's toxic and masculine. We demonize male preferences, but we don't demonize female preferences. A man will lose interest when he sees that he is trying way harder than you. It literally doesn't matter how pretty you are, how happy you are, how successful and confident you are. You will lose him simply because you are not giving him any effort. A lot of guys are socially awkward. I think I think you're a bit ignorant to like the average guy's experience. Consider this, right? The average guy today, his granddad had to put in a quarter of the work to mm -hmm. get the kind of woman that is four times as amazing as the woman. Oh, you're are you talking? You're talking like about his grand like his grandmother was an amazing woman and a, and a very very feminine natural woman, and his granddad yeah. really didn't have to do the kind of work he has to do right now Yo, as a young man in the Western world. So so you're talking about hoflation. Yes, it's hopefully. Hopeflation, so modern men have to work five times harder than their grandfathers did for women 20 times worse than what their grandmothers were. It's true. It's actually true. Because if I could explain to anybody how lonely pregnancy is, I, I can't put it into words. I'm just so like, <laughs> you let him hit it raw. You didn't have second thoughts. Now you're a single mom. Now you're a single mom. So last night I ended things with a guy that in one of my previous videos I had referred to as the most intentional man I've ever spoken to.
It really does suck because he truly is amazing, um, has a lot of the things I'm looking for in a person, um, but we hung out like six or seven times and I just wasn't feeling it. And it's just really a shame because he really is a great guy. If he had asked me for more details, I really don't know that I would have been able to give him many besides that shame, but there's really nothing you can do. It's just the name of the game. Ex-boyfriend, so. <laughs> Wait, ex-boyfriend? Yep. She calls us friends, but I don't consider us friends. What do you guys consider each other? Technically still figure it out, but I'm the one she calls when she needs to cry. I've tried. It's a work in progress. It's one, so is everything. It's one work in progress. So you guys are just trying to work on things? See how it goes. I'm trying to work on things. <laughs> if he gave you a guilt-free pass to sleep with anybody in the world, would you use it? Yeah. On who? Zach Efron, Josh Bowman, some celebrity, hot celebrity. You turn that down? Mm -mm. Couldn't do it. All right, what if it was all the way around? I know what I'm worth. One night with one celebrity doesn't change who I am. So you wouldn't use it? Even There's if I no gave point. it to you? No. Because it's it, it sounds like a trap. If, if, if your significant other is willing to give you a one night and a one night stand with anybody in the world, it sounds like a trap for your loyalty. Fuck, no, fuck that. Let's go! Men need to understand that many women may seem unpredictable, and relationships with them can feel temporary. It's often said that, she's not yours, it's just your turn. Statistics show that women initiate 80% of divorces, suggesting a higher tendency to end marriages. The idea that one can turn unfaithful women into loyal partners is seen as unrealistic. Countless men have experienced the deep pain of discovering their loved one's infidelity, feeling betrayed and heartbroken. Some women cheat easily discarding loyalty and commitment. This behavior mocks family values and leaves a trail of broken hearts. It's no wonder that movements like men going their own way MGTOW exist, as they respond to such perceived betrayals and the erosion of trust and integrity in relationships. I want everybody to be happy. I want everybody to find someone that makes them happy. I want everybody to live a beautiful life that they want for themselves. I don't wish ill on anybody, but can, can, I do. I can't stand the delusion. Now we all got to sit here and we got to be like, oh, yeah, this is great. You know, this is somebody who could get 95 percent of guys. And imagine going through life with that sense of delusion like we see it. And this is an extreme example. But when women walk around like that, imagine walking around thinking I could get 95 percent of guys. How many guys are you telling no to because you think you're better than them? Are you or is it in your head? Just think about it. If you don't want to wind up alone, you have to have a, a, a realistic assessment of what you bring to the table, of your looks, of your capabilities, of what you're willing to do in a relationship, of your character, all of it. People meet people nowadays. Being a single gal in a single world, where do I go if I don't want to go on dating apps? Like, I don't like dating apps. I've had them. I've tried them. I get disappointed. I get discouraged. It, let's be honest. Let's be real. Dating apps, if you're going to think this person is attractive, you're probably going to swipe yes. And if you don't find them attractive, you're going to swipe no. But sometimes people just aren't photogenic. They just don't present themselves well through photos. That's why I just feel like it's so much better to meet people in person. Also, just like with having dating apps, like it just feels forced. And I don't want it to feel forced. I want to like go out in public, meet someone like in the wild both just having to bump into each other and you're like and then you know sparks fly that i just want to know where like where do the single men go where are you going where are you hanging out because, like if you're in the garage like come out like are you at the lake are you snowmobiling are you fishing it's winter time what are you doing right now <laughs> it's funny how am i this amazing like and single like are you kidding me and like for the longest time i just like wasn't worried about it at this point i'm like i'm 31 what is happening like is there just no one left put me on a dating show the bachelor the bachelorette
love island i don't even care just put me somewhere so i can actually like interact with the male race i'm not interacting with males <laughs> anyways <let's> <laughs> love comes to you when you least expect it shut up i have been trying to not expect it for like six years and also i was speaking to my friend the other day and she was like well like are you like trying to like go out of your way to meet people i'm like no because people are fucking telling me that it comes when you least expect it so here i am like trying to convince myself i don't want it and i'm just not expecting it so i can get it and it's not happening but then even when i go out of my way to like go on dating apps it just never works because these people that i'm meeting aren't my cup of tea are not wanting what i want they just want a casual thing and like as as someone who's never been in any kind of romantic entanglement i'm my first my first relationship is not going to be a fucking casual relationship and yeah so like what one is it should i put myself out there or should i just pretend that i'm not like oh i don't want a boyfriend all right if you are single and you are in the dating marketplace at that time, when that happens, say you're 37, 36, 38, 40, whatever it may be, and you are still on the hunt for that man, and you hit the wall and you can see in your face that you are no longer the face that you were at, what, whether it was 30 or 35 or 25, whatever it is, you are going to be panicked. Because now you know that you are going to compete with women who are younger, who are largely more fertile, not always, but largely speaking, yes, who have that youthfulness to them, who have that estrogen, progesterone, whatever the hormonal balance is that makes someone young, it's there and you're losing it. And you become hyper aware of that. And that is why women begin to panic. You know what I want to talk about, you guys? So I live in New York, specifically Brooklyn, and I be outside, you know, enjoying summer as I should. And I've been going to the block parties, all of that good stuff, you know, the day parties has been a time. But the problem is the men just stare at you. They just stare at you the whole time. They don't approach you. They don't want to get to know you. They don't want to, oh, do you want to drink? It's just a staring contest the whole time. I'm trying to figure out how am I supposed to meet my future husband if the men are not approaching? Because I'm not approaching a man. Like, it's giving the men want to be chased now. That's what it's giving, and I don't like it. What's your price? I'm 23, so like I'll say at least like 10k. Let's 50 say, million. Probably around there. 10k? Yeah. What's your price, Kat? Yeah. You're getting about 3 4 dollars and I'll be all right. I'll be, I'll be out here. I'm easy. Just give me my money. I don't give a fuck what you do. Just give me my shit so I can go. Okay. What's your price? Um, My price is like 15k to 20k. Like 50k. I either fuck for love or for money, and currently it's been for money. Oh, so you fucked them for money? Good thing. Yeah. Oh my god, thank god. What about money? Money is not important. Would you marry an ugly man? I've married one. No, I look at my other one in What do you think? Disgusting. Why? Any any girl with any decency would never walk in straight with the man. Disgusting. Well, I think it's just a gimmick and Go. um I don't think any girl in their right mind would wear it. I believe, you know, the man is supposed to be the breadwinner. Okay. Uh, we, I would like to, like, talk about, you know, maybe having a, a weekly allowance or something. Uh, how much would the week? Yeah, how much would be? A, you know. So how much is a weekly allowance? Like, my, my last relationship, you know, he was giving me, like, two, three thousand every week. <laughs> so isn't it funny how some women associated providing men with money and money only? Whatever happened to a man providing information, education, guidance, advice, or even behavior improvement? Do you know why some women consider a man giving them money being the provider of the relationship? Because that is the only thing they would accept from a man. A lot of modern women, they don't want no guidance. They don't want to be told that they need to do better as the female in that relationship. How could that woman from the previous clip, I'm not judging her, how could she be an asset to his life how can she bring improvement to his life actually goes for a lot of women out there a lot of women they are so cool and so content with spending a man's money that he clearly works hard for and don't even pack the man's lunch girl please these women they don't even want to they don't even want to master the basics in a relationship they don't want to cook they don't want to clean they don't want to do none of that they just want to sit there be pretty and spend the man's money and what kind of world do you live in honestly and especially what are you going to do when you get old whose money are you going to spend then you're gonna be alone and ugly.
I'm seven. So I would prefer someone who's over six feet. Honestly, I mean, definitely over six figures. You gotta be six feet, six figures. So a man that made 80,000, that's too, that's, that's not no, enough. No, not, not at all. What? Why, why is 80,000 not enough, bro? I know me, I know my lifestyle. That's just not going to cut it. We're not gonna go out to eat how I want. We're not gonna be able to travel like how I want. We're not gonna be, it's just gonna be too many like limitations. And I don't like that. Okay, so where does she want to go out to eat that's going to require a man to make six figures? Are they going to be eating salt bay steaks three times a week? And he has to be six feet tall. No, not not 5'11", six feet tall. It's the triple six. These modern women want the triple six. That's six figures, six feet tall with the six pack. And 80K is not enough. Nope, has to be six figures. Nothing less because that would be breaking the triple six. You have to keep the triple six. Yeah, I can't lie. These kind of all sound like this. That sounds like a miserable marriage, and those all sound like rules that you made up to benefit you. Um, just me. It's raining outside. Isn't that lovely? Thank you. I'll be damned, your shit. Guys don't like to think about women haven't been with anybody before them at all. Like no one at all. They prefer to just be like. The vagina was closed before they got there and then it opened and now it's in process. Like they just can't, they can't, they don't want to visualize it. It's very uncomfortable for them to do that. So the more partners you've had, the more you start to seem like an open 24 hours, seven, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, seven 11. They're not into it. It just is also, if they're looking at you seriously, they're looking saying, this could be the mother of my child, going to be pregnant. Like you just, it just, it's a clash. Like promiscuity and that family, it's just a clash in their head. They don't like it. Now look at the difference between these two women. For better. For better. For worse. For worse. For richer. For richer. For poor. For poorer. <laughs> submit to you, Miles. I'll forever respect you, Miles. I'll forever honor you, Miles, as the head of our home. In heaven, they hear. <laughs> On earth, I declare and decree, I shall be a submissive wife unto you. I don't know about you, but I know which one. My shit first, so I don't know why you get all your stuff and get out. He dude. wasn't, he wasn't the one to say that shit. Deuces. Deuces. Deuces to you, bitch. Yeah, get out. You already kicked out. I'm going back to Angie. Uh, no, you not. Yeah, I'm going back to Angie. No, you not. Stuff and go. Angie's coming back. <laughs> you know, she lasted probably, what is it, five days? Not a week. You know, a week. Yeah. A week. Seven yeah. days. A week. And she's already go tooted on. and booted. What number employee are you of Tesla? I would say I'm probably in the 300s. How good was their off? Gave us a lot of stock options to start with. I mean, they gave us 40,000 options. My strike price was 90 cents. Oh, no. Your strike price Wait. was 90, 90 cents? 90 cents with my strike price. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was like, at, at ninety oh cents, who's gonna gosh. take them seriously? I mean, because I surely wasn't. I mean, like, I was, I had loved the job, but I didn't take the, <laughs> at ninety cents. Who cares? So I got forty thousand dollars. Whoop dee, you know, that's all it was back then. But that's fifty million dollars today. Oh my gosh! So, <laughs> what did you do with those options? Well, um, I kept them, and then I went through a divorce, and the uh, divorce lawyer uh, convinced the judge that the Tesla was gonna go out of business in twenty thirteen, and they sold them all. No, that's yeah. the most expensive attorney I think oh. I've ever. Oh yeah, but it, was, yeah. it was you know like whatever sixty grand or something at the time, but now that's fifty million dollars. I actually <laughs> did some research to see if I had a case against the lawyer, but I don't. Even though he made a he convinced the judge that the, they were going to go out of business and we we're going to have to sell the stock to pay his lawyer fees. I'm how often does that keep you up at night? Mm -hmm. Let me 
I'll just get the door for you. Okay. He got me at the Cheesecake Factory, y'all. I ain't getting out this phone. Mm-mm. Yes. Uh, would you want me to open the door for you? Look at me. Are you? You're recording me? Yeah. Yeah. This is the Cheesecake Factory. This is the Cheesecake Factory, y'all. What's the problem with that? This is a chain restaurant. Who takes someone that looks like this to a chain restaurant? You want to talk about it? I'm, I'm fine with talking about it, <laughs> even in front of them. Oh sure. yeah, I want to talk about it. Yeah. Come okay. on, get up on in the car. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. <laughs> I would go to these frat parties. I would guys, whatever. There was this one night though. And I was like, hey, you know, I talked to them all individually. I'm like, hey, so I'm gonna just be waiting in this closet. I don't even care about the party. I'm gonna be waiting in this closet. It's their laundry room. And just like come in whenever and f me. Like I'll just sit here and be like a human doll basically. So anyone, you didn't care who? No, I didn't. I was like, just, I'll be in this closet. Like come f me if you want, if you get home. Um, I was on birth control. I let them all come at me. Huh? She belongs to the streets. Something is wrong with you! Did I ask you to wash the dishes? Man, I come from Jamaica for wash dishes and wash care. I come from Jamaica for make money. Yeah? Well, I'm working and I asked you to wash the dishes. Were you still interested in your green card? Yeah, babes, I'm do wash the plate them right now. Yeah, yeah. No That's what I thought. And wash my car when you're done too. Okay, okay, babes. When you make your claims or you shoot your shots and a woman comes down and she marries you without even trying to get to know you you're saying to yourself i hit the jackpot but sometimes you didn't hit the jackpot what you're going to find when you finally arrive wherever foreign country you want to be at is that a lot of you are going to be married to people who are mentally ill now not to be disrespectful or anything but in our country they'll say mad so you marry a woman and when you're in jamaica you're on your best behavior or oh, she's on her best behavior until you reach and some of you after you arrive in these foreign countries you wish that you had stayed in jamaica and suffered because the hell they put you through so here's what i'm saying to you if you are going to go on these impromptu you know marital agreements Please know that when you go to foreign, you have to be prepared to walk some dogs. You have to be prepared to wash some underwear. Now, Jamaican men, that's not to say that they won't do these things for their partner, but they don't want to be forced to do it. And a lot of men, when they arrive, you know, they realize that they have to sleep in the same bed with dogs. So a lot of men, after they go through the immigration process and they arrive and they're so excited when they come, they stumble up on what appears to be prison bring card bros the sentiments expressed in our message which we discussed earlier in the video highlight a deep sense of betrayal and disappointment that many men feel when faced with infidelity and broken trust in relationships while it is true that divorce rates and infidelity can be distressingly high it is essential to recognize that these experiences are not universally applicable to all women or relationships Generalizing based on negative experiences can lead to a skewed perspective that may not reflect the full spectrum of human behavior and relationships. It's important to remember that every individual is unique, and while some may act in ways that betray trust, many others uphold values of loyalty and commitment. Building healthy, fulfilling relationships often involves mutual respect, open communication, and a willingness to work through challenges together. For those who choose the MGTOW, men going their own way path, it's a personal decision that reflects their desire for independence and self-preservation. However, fostering a broader understanding and empathy towards the complexities of human relationships can help in moving past hurt and building a more balanced view of the world. And that concludes today's discussion on MegTow Voice.
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on future videos. Share your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you all in the next video.